back guys uh, so back on the rip here today cloudy a little bit grumpy we got a little bur volatile weather here in the, in the springtime which can happen but uh, that's what's going down rainstorms kind of hopefully they'll burn off throughout the day if not we don't need to put sunscreen on um, it's away for about a week or something like that headed down to Samoa I had some time off here had to bang out one more trip down there and take care of a couple business with the with the surf resort there and I, I don't I won't we're gonna get so busy now I won't be able to get back down there until you know well after the summertime so went down there got some Amazing barrel. It's me, Junior, Brandon, getting spit out of tubes. It's the backdrop. Very grateful. If there's any you know, surfers out there that are looking for somewhere cool to go, go check it out. Solani Surf Resort. Uh, my place, we basically set it up to make it comfortable in the absolute paradise and surf on crowded ways. So check it out. Um, Anyways, yeah, I was down there, had a really good time. Um, I did not do any fishing. There really is no fishing operations out of there anymore. Um, and that is something I was uh, thinking I should bring to point, is that, uh, man, every day I'm surfing, I'm just seeing these piles of aku out there, and I'm just thinking about how much bait was there and all the big fish I saw, and I just started getting this feeling that uh, I, I need to fish there again at some point in my life. Uh, that the really, really, truly big, big ones are out there. So, you know, uh, one of these days, I think I'll, you know, maybe I'll find the right person that wants to put a boat down there for a little bit, hit it hard, and, and try and catch an absolute, like, you know, Polynesian, like, real South Pacific, uh, you know, giant down there. They're there, and there's no pressure on them. There's so much bait, it's insane. So, if anyone out there hears this message and wants to, uh, wants to explore it and, and uh, put a bit of time in there and try and catch an absolute monster, let me know. I, I know all the ins and outs, I'll get it fired up, we'll get going. Anyways, and their season is the opposite to here. So our season, summertime through here, is the off season there. Their season's winter time. October, uh, November, December, Jan, Feb, those are the months. I caught my grander in November. That's when the big fish are around. Lots of tunas and stuff, lots of me. But anyways, I'm in Kona. We're trying to do it here. We're trying to catch a giant one here in the springtime. That's what springtime is known for in Kona. Be super hit and miss for sure. I, I've, you know, a lot of people love it here in the spring. It's a love hate for, thing for me. It can be deathly slow other than the spearfish bite, but it can be deathly slow, but then you find a big one and it's kind of worth it. From what I hear, the fishing's been atrocious. I haven't heard anything good, which is not what you want to hear when you return and start fishing again, but it makes no difference. Every day can be di different out here. And, you know, maybe they're gonna start biting today. Uh, we're gonna start off the day fishing Kaibi Point. Got a good current for some of the spots I really like to fish up in here. Uh, you know, there is no reports of somewhere that's biting and not biting, it's just not biting. So we're gonna find a big one up in here, hopefully doing, doing her thing and get her. Oh, oh that was a wave. Hit my rigger. When it's, when it's bumpy like this, it makes a little jingle in my uh, taglines. I thought we could have got to the Anyways, we're ready. As you can see, we're ready. <laughs> so stand by. I'll keep you posted throughout the day as our plans change. We'll probably fish this area through the tide change unless I see something I like or don't like. Um, and then we may, uh, may mosey on down south and see what we got going on down there. But uh, for now, I'm going to start up here, hit my little honey hole spots I got here that I really uh, have been dialing in on the last few years. 
kind of figuring out this spot. And it's funny, it's so close to the harbor, you would think like we would all fish here all the time because it's really good. But what happens a lot is that we are missing out. I mean, it's right here. You leave the harbor and you're right in this area. So there's always that desire to like, oh, we should head way south, or we should head way north, or we should go here, or the fish are there, or whatever. But I'm telling you, like, there are a lot of big fish that come up in the pocket here. You know, the World Cup was won here one year. You know, I probably caught, you know, well over 60% of my big ones up in this area, real close to town, right off the cruise ship sometimes, right in here, right off. I got little high spots that I've just been marking. I've been fishing a hard last couple of years are really kind of marking areas I, I like and we've done good here. We've got a little, couple little honey holes we like, but let's see if we can do good here this morning. <laughs> if not, we'll uh, we'll find somewhere else. Stand by. Hold on. Hopefully some action coming soon. Spear, never mind. There she is, guys. You can get out of the chair. You can get him out of the chair and come look at it. Yeah. Get in there. Get in there, Rio. Okay. Look at that. Pretty, huh? Uh huh. You're really pretty. All right. You can touch it if you want. Yeah. Look how slimy she is. I got some pictures and stuff.
that's going to bring us some luck. Heading around the corner, another kind of grumpy, stormy looking day. Kind of springtime weather for us here. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're out here. We're looking around. Um, so last time we were out, I remember uh, you know, all we did was we just found that spear, but uh, you know, I, I kept feeling like there was going to be one in that area. We pounded that area for a while. We worked it hard. Anyways, we headed in. I got a call from my buddy. He knew I was kind of fishing there all day. He was just, he'd fish down south, pounded that area all day, and then was just trawling home. And on his way home, he, had to, he was just trawling the six or 700, right, right in front of basically where we had just been working, working, working. He catches like a 600 pounder right there, so. Um, so we're gonna start our day kind of in the same area, look around, see what's going on. From just what I've noticed right away, the current's picked up quite a bit, it's smoking, so. If I don't see what I wanna see in here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head out. I think it's just a little bit too strong for what I like to fish in here. So we'll see, but uh, but the interesting, you know, thing about the fish, you know, that, you know, and I think people are discovering this more now, obviously, with the Omnis, is, you know, they're marking fish and they're driving over the top of them. The fish don't even come into the spread or they come in, you don't even see them. And they just kind of look at everything and then bail. Um, but, you know, with the, with the ability of that Omni sonar, now you're able to kind of stay on that fish for a long time and continually keep going over it. And it's interesting that, you know, you can drive over that fish, you know, 20 times and on the 23rd time it comes up and eats you know so you know it makes you think that uh you know you, you could be in the right areas you could be fishing the right spots and you don't have that omni sonar so you may not know but you could be in the right spots and you do a couple passes and go ah, i'm over and i'm out of here but that fish could be there the one you're looking for it's just not ready to feed and it's a case where you'll be pounding a zone pounding a zone pounding a zone and an event will occur you know a tide change uh uh, a major, a minor, you got a you know, moon overhead on her foot, something, something will happen or whatever, for any reason, whatever, that fish decides to now find the eat it eats. You know, another thing I've noticed too is we'll be fishing an area really hard for a while, we know there's a fish there, you're pounding, pounding, another boat will just come straight lining through and hook that fish. Now, I don't know if that's a case that the fish has seen your stuff so much that it's just now become complacent to it, it's not interested, or maybe it's come up and kind of tried and just was over it and now it's not really interested in you and something else comes through, different sound, different spread, different signature in the ocean, different vibration, different electrical now, and the thing comes up and eats. Or we simply could just be overthinking the entire matter and it's just sometimes those are, they feed, sometimes they don't. But, um, you know, I tend to think there's a little bit more behind it than that. But, uh, but anyhow, if that gives you any idea, you know, you find a spot you like and you feel like there's going to be a fish there put your time in a little bit you know i think that you know when you look at the guys that are really good you know i've observed some of the, the legends here fishing you know and how they'll fish a certain area and you know you observe they, they won't just do one pass and simply leave sometimes they'll they'll stick it out they'll hit an area they'll mow along if they feel like there's a fish there because you know like i'm saying sometimes they're there they're just not ready yet. Or what'll happen is you'll, you'll fish that area, okay, nothing's happening. Leave, go explore, and come back and be there for the event, whatever that event's gonna be for the day. Those are kind of just some things to think about. And uh, you know, hopefully that helps. Um, I'm hoping it helps us today, because we need a blue marlin, but it has been treacherous out here. Uh, but we will see what today will bring us. I'll touch base with you guys in a little bit, because I do believe we're gonna make it change in plans I think we're gonna we're gonna hit these spots a couple times but I'm just I'm not liking how hard this current is ripping off the point so I think we're gonna make a change in plans so I will touch base and keep you at home hopefully Around and took off. Um, 
definitely a nicer sized fish, so that was good to see. But um, I was actually about to get on here and do a little update for our plan. You know, I was fishing, I came up around the point, and that current was just so aggressive. It just wasn't for that, the spots I like to fish there, it just wasn't doing what I wanted to do. So started wandering down and I'm gonna try this other edge here. Might be a little bit better in on our first pass. I had that one come up and put his face up in it. It just came off, but uh, that's, that's a good sign. Um, and it was a nicer one too, so so they're around. And uh, just gotta pay our dues here. We gotta pay our dues, so. Uh, standing by. And uh, hopefully we find another one. Those little things like that, that's a little killer. <laughs> well, I say you done changed the angle three or four times. Doing your skin. No, just below it. I can go to it if you want. She's rolling, just let her roll. Yeah. Good time, stretch it out. Yeah. Re realize. Damn. Might be a nicer fish than we thought it was. Tip action. 
fishing now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My hands. Think about a cheeseburger later, you know. It's good on the back though. It's not that that that, that sea mount is really nice. I like it better than the bucket harnesses a lot of people use. That is a bucket harness, but not the, the chain ones, I mean. Yeah, stubborn. Why is an Irish male? <laughs> I bet you she's a female. Oh yeah, she's she's definitely a female. Not not to go against the theory. I totally disagree with you. That man. fish is big enough. <laughs> she's a female. She may have the temperament of an Irish male, but she's a female. For sure. I'm outnumbered on this boat, I know. But well, I know it's a male. The males only grow to about 200 pounds. Okay. <laughs> Well, well, well. So that one came up, ate the short corner, teased it a bit, it left the short corner, and ate the short rigger, the, uh, the, uh, the rig. It came up on the uh, short corner, and uh, it was a pretty big bite. I haven't really seen the fish much, had to jump and pull a crazy drag all over the place. Um, chased it around, down, 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 down with it. See if we can get him. A decent hole. Our angler's doing good in the chair. trying to get behind her. She's so squirrely. She is. Really tough bit. All right. Let's see, we may, we may gain here, I'm hoping. Stay right there behind the chair, Miss Joey, in case she goes ballistic when I grab the leader. <laughs> Just so I don't go over and nothing happens to you either. It's right there, doing great. It's closing down. It's closing.
little more turret. Yep. Beautiful, thank you. Yeah, man. That's pretty, so much you need, because you can see the angle better than I can. I gotta be right here, because I'm about, about to have to grab the lead. You can see her? I grabbed the leader, she's caught. Even if I gotta let it go, you've caught her, so. Yeah, just back it down to that second piece of tape, the yellow. Got it, the yellow? Yeah. Second piece of tape is good, eh? Okay. See her too. Big shadow, right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your swordfish. <laughs> That's what my, my, the main coast streak on here say, caught him like, yeah, yeah, I see you, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like 18. All right. That leader. Yeah, I don't think it's quite ready to quit. I'm about to find out. Just reel that up to the tip. Just reel it up a little bit. All right, stop, stop. All right, you can reel up to the tip. <clears throat> Coming up right here, Mr. Joey. Beauty! First big one in a while, baby. I remember how to do it. <sighs> Just wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Doing good, Chris. <sighs> Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's a big fish. Holy shit, that's the biggest one I've ever pulled on. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Oh my god. Go back up to the uh, good job. <laughs> oh, you're fine, dude. That was a great fish, dude. <laughs> oh my god, that's the biggest one ever pulled on. Let's go, Chris. Oh my god, that was sick. Look like right here. It could be a little bit up because she's doing like that, but it looked pretty good down the hatch. Whew. 
Great job, dude. Catching a fish that big this quickly. There she is right there, I see her again. Keep coming. Then I'm gonna go back down to the yellow tape when I grab the leader again, okay? Just don't unclip this time. Yellow, not green, right? You can go down to the green, that's fine. Yes, sir. Just tell, tell me. She turned back that way. Whatever you need, boss. Go to, so to the tip, yeah, and back to the bottom green one. She's just swimming at us. She's going out this way now. Congratulations, man. Job, that is like a, a real one right there. Yeah, yeah. thanks That's for your work. Yeah. Hey, bud. You busted your ass. Congratulations. Yeah. That's a great job on the rock. Thank you. All right. <laughs> nice job. What do you think, Nick? Oh, my God. That was fucking sick. All right, guys. That's what I'm talking about. Um, I was an 800. Uh, I actually threw the measurement down just to see, just to kind of test the eye. And she was there. She was eight. Um, so that was that was a good one. That was a real good one. Didn't jump much at all. Uh, came up and, and hammered that sundowner. I've had a lot of fish been, been smashing that Aloha Lord sundowner. Came up, smashed it, uh, disappeared, then just piled on the, uh, I call it Rick. Rick from Arizona. It's a tantrum uh, XL bandit. A lot of big fish I've caught on that lure. Uh, came in, just smashed that. Um, Basically, we were kind of working an area, like I said, we came in and I said, you know, it was a little bit, the current was a little bit too, not doing what I wanted to do for the spots I like right off Kaibi. So I came down this way and there's a, there's a real hard edge, which I thought might complement that like really hard rip of the current and uh, came here, our first pass, lucky enough, had a nice one come up on the long corner, stayed here, did about two, three more passes, 
boom, that one piled on the shore, came back, ate that, and, uh, and we were uh, off to the races. Uh, beautiful fish, super healthy, released it, it's all fired up. Um, yeah, happy, stoked, nice one. And uh, that was my first 800 pounder for the 2023 season. So thanks for riding along for that one. I think that was Nicholas's biggest fish that he's wired. And FM pole, we had to dump it one time. Uh, we didn't have to dump it, but I really kind of wanted to get it up close and get a good look at it, take some pictures and stuff. So no need to straighten the hook out. We got the we got the release. If we needed to, if we were in the tournament, we could have put a gap in that fish. Um, so we let him go and he came back and got her up alongside and got a, got some photos and uh, had our moment with her and let her go happy. Uh, well, I don't know if she's happy, but I would you know she's probably a bit disturbed. But uh, she's healthy and she's out there spawning and. Uh, she swam right away. I mean, you'll see on the video, she was just lit up. That's how we like to let them go. That is that. So let's see if we can find another one. One for two. subject to go over I would need like well you need years of probably fishing to really completely understand it but you know uh, on a very brief description of hunting for big fish right so in terms of tactics and hunting for big fish right you know obviously now you got things in your sonar and different things where you can actually mark these animals out there uh, not always but a lot of them you can mark them but I'm talking strictly, you know, on a going out there on a hunting basis. Where am I going to fish? Whatever. What's going on? Now, everywhere in the world is a little bit different, right? I'm talking. I'm going to be talking about a structure-oriented place. Some places uh, they have sand piles that hold bait, so it has a lot more to do with where the bait is. But you'd also probably, you know, you'd be using your currents and stuff for that. But let's, you know, talk on a structural basis and talk about kind of how we fish Kona, right? So in terms of a bigger fish, the first thing is I'm not really concerned about my depth terms of am I in too shallow am I out too deep if the water clarity is really good and there's bait around I mean I'm probably not going to be focusing less than a hundred fathoms but they're in there the guys fishing for onos and, and stuff on the ono ledge they catch granders they catch big ones all the time I wouldn't spend all my time in there but I do come into the hundred fathom quite often I've caught a lot of fish in a hundred two hundred caught a lot of my big ones funnily enough in that four to five hundred fathom area sometimes so shallower but basically what what we're talking about in terms of like how we're fishing right it's, especially Kona you don't have a lot of uh, surface activity it's all kind of happening underneath so underneath us is all kinds of hills and valleys and bumps and little chill points and little little cracks and uh, all kinds of things so what you got to think about is a current right so say the current's running this way right here's a piece of structure right here's a big something right it's not hard structure right? As the current hits this structure, it's now going to bounce off of it. You know, it's going to start pushing up, right? So you're going to get that like really rich water. It's going to push up to the top, which creates a upwelling, basically creates the building blocks of life, and therefore creates an area where you know you have a better chance of finding a bigger one if you're going to work those areas. Now, you know, it takes a while to understand what certain degrees of current and how hard it's pulling, pushing, and all that. You know, what spots you want to fish. And you know, some spots, you know, if the current's really light, you may want to stick real close to the structure. If the current's pushing really hard, you may have a bigger upwell, you might hit more. And, and every spot's a little bit different. And you know, I, I feel like every time you're out on the ocean, for me, this is just a classroom every day. So I'm continually learning. I'll, I'll continually learn and adjust and continue, like just learn, learn, learn until I stop doing this. So, you know, you gotta bear everything that I say in mind, um, you know, that it's, uh, this is an opinion and this is where I'm at in my fishing career and what I've seen and what I do and what I follow. But, um, you know, there's certainly still a lot to learn. I think everybody out on the ocean has a lot to learn. But, uh, you know, in terms of what you're, what you're gonna kinda wanna base your days around and then you can kinda work off that and, you know, figure your own thing out. Uh, 
uh, you know, there's probably certain things that everybody has that, you know, determines where they may want to go for a bigger fish or how they want to fish them or what the baits, you know, all kinds of things. But the building blocks of life are where you want to start off. So, you know, places that are going to have a rich upwelling, places that are going to favor the current you're fishing. Um, another thing that's important is where do you want to fish on structure? Um, and that's something that can be used, you know, universally is, uh, you know, where do you want to position yourself on a piece of structure? If you're on a seamount or if you're, you know, you're going out to fish an edge or something like that. Um, you know, bear in mind, I'm not factoring in things like, you know, cold water and warm water eddies and temperature breaks and, uh, you know, weed lines. I'm strictly talking Maybe, structure. Yeah. I mean, is there a rhyme or reason, like, when you drive, uh, where you're going, like, at this point? Or you oh, yeah, it's pretty funny. I was just doing a thing, because people ask about Oh, sorry about I was that. literally just saying what I'm doing, but, um, yeah, I mean, pretty much structure. So, what we got right now is a north current. Um, so, basically pushing up this way, right? So, you got a little, bunch of little cracks up in here. This is all topography right here. Um, under here we got to do a back attack metric sorry. So basically what you got is the current's hitting these ledges and it's creating upwelling. And, and that's basically where your bait is. Yeah, and that's a bigger fish like coming there. I like to come right up inside tight up in all these little scraps. And so these are all fathoms? That's all fathoms. Everything on my chart is fathoms. So that's yeah. times six or something? Yeah, times six. Yep. Yep, yep. And so the fish that we caught just now was like there's a big U that comes out, like a big finger that comes out. We were fishing one edge of the finger, and uh, I'll show you. Uh, you can't see it on this chart. The chart down up under here, you'll see it. Okay. But it comes out here as a big finger like this. And we missed that one right about there. And we were kind of working that spot we came here, and that's where we got there. Where are they, what are they eating? Um, they're eating tuna, they're eating everything they can out here. But the main the main thing they're eating are gonna be like skipjack tunas, oh, you know, skippies and stuff like that. Little yellow food. Um, but they'll they'll eat they'll be open up their stomachs there's all kinds of but usually the big ones if I've killed one and I open its stomach, there's usually a few of those offers and skipjacks is kinda full. Of, so. so they uh, like a swordfish they've done some sunnies on them that they maybe gain like 40 pounds a year. Yeah. All right, sorry about that, guys. I, 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 I cut that short because we started talking about swordfish and blue marlin and what they eat and all that. But basically, to finish what I was saying, um, I would like to find an area that, I, you know, the, the structure is complement or the current is complementing the structure, and I like to kind of work that area. And I'm not afraid to put in a lot of time into one area, even if I don't see other people getting bit, even if I don't get bit in one one pass, and I'll put my time in there and, and see what happens and let the chips lay where they lay. But uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, I like the I like fishing shallow personally. Everybody does something a little different, but here in Kona, I like to fish pretty shallow. The, the structure way inside is just really really dramatic, and a lot of times there's a lot of bait in there too. So I like getting in there. Um, that's just how, that's just my style. That's just what I like to do. My little spots that I like and um, yeah, go out there and have fun with it. You know, all the technology that's out there now really makes what we're doing a lot easier uh, than it was for these old guys. You know, back in the day, they, you know, would just use the structure off the land and, you know, points off the land and uh, old maps and old charts and things like that. And so, you know, I have uh, utmost respect for all those older guys that, you know, and some of them are still fishing here and absolute legends, you know, and they've been able to transition now to technology, but I have nothing but just the highest form of respect for those guys because they, they were doing it without all this stuff we have, you know, and now the newer generation is going to have the Omnis and that's just a whole nother thing. Um, so it's interesting, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I think when it comes down to truly, you know, the hunting and the looking for these animals, that's to me what drives me, what makes it fun for me. Obviously the bites and chasing them and all that, but I, I enjoy the, the hunt for them and then, you know, putting in the time and the effort and learning and, and getting a little better every year and finding your spots a little bit better and then getting the bites and catching the fish. And that's really fulfilling to me. Um, and hopefully it is to you guys. So go out there and hunt, you know, that's, I like to say hunt, you know, because that's kind of what really what we're doing. Um, you know, 
know, you going out there, you know, deer hunters, elk hunters, all that. Very similar in a manner. We're going out there as a captain, you're going out there and you're on the hunt and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're guiding your people to try and find that, uh, you know, what it is that you're looking for. So, anyhow, enough of my ramblings. That's my, my two cents on that. Um, get, get some good, get some, you know, get some good technology, get some charts, get a good sounder. Um, go out there, look around, and uh, go find you a big one. All right. We're going to work on finding us another one. Stand by. All right, folks. Well, uh, Mark Charter is actually super stoked, as they should be, considering, you know, not every day you catch one that big and then you got your spear um, and they're actually uh, they're ready to, to call it a day and head in and go drink some Mai Tais by the pool. So uh, so we are doing one more pass over here off the point and we're going to head in early, call it an early day, call it a successful day. Uh, I'm glad everything worked out. We found that bigger one we've been looking for. We found the golden Easter egg out here. Uh, not a lot going on. It's real, real hit and miss, real slow. but. You know, like I was saying, that's going on. You never know. It's slow, slow, and then there's a real big one. So it makes it worth it. You know, that's why we want. That's what keeps fishing here every day exciting. Uh, is even when it's slow, there's always your chance. And, you know, you just got to put your time in and not get discouraged. Which is not the. It's not the easiest thing, but you, you know, uh, I feel like I'm getting better at that. I'm, you know, just kind of taking the days as they go and just put your time in and knowing that you just uh, got to wait your turn sometimes. But. Happy we got that one. Beautiful fish. Uh, just a dinosaur right there. Awesome. Let him go. Let her go. Healthy. That makes me happy. And uh, yeah, we'll see you out here shortly. Got a few days off, then we're back at it, and we are going to be busy as hell. So we got some editing to do. We'll sit down, put this episode together, and hopefully you all enjoy it. All right. Sayard Monty, God wanting, God is a yard Monty, God wanting, God is a yard Monty, God wanting, God is a yard Monty.